Okay, awesome. Uh, so hi, uh, the topic of the talk is Node.js internals uh, from the uh, JavaScript side. Um, so who am I? Uh, Nuno introduced me already, uh, but my name is Maciej Małecki. Uh, this is the, how you spell it properly, Nuno. Uh, so I write code for Nojitsu and for pure fun of writing code. Uh, you can see my GitHub, uh, my Twitter, and my email right there. Um, so, okay, so who the fuck is this guy and why is he talking to me about Node.js internals? So basically, this is a time for a cool story about me getting started with this thing. This isn't going to take so uh, long, it's kind of boring story at all. Uh, but I have to warn you, hairy legs will, fall, will, will follow. Um, okay, so a few months ago, I'm not sure if you can see it, I can kind of see it, but my leg was broken. So I was looking for things uh, to get into. I was looking for new technologies uh, to try. I was looking for, for something fun to write. So uh, basically, I was just like a bored kid being 17 year old and stuff. So yeah, fuck. But turns out it wasn't that bad. I, I could sit by my computer and, and just write code. So uh, this is, so um, my friend told me about this Node.js thing. I wasn't really too, uh, to into that because it was j like JavaScript. JavaScript is a fun language, right? You, you just use it to, to write clocks and, and browsers. But turns out it was actually pretty fun. But the first day um, with, with Node, uh, I installed uh, the master version, uh, master branch from GitHub, and well, shit just blew up. NPM wasn't really working, so um, I was really bored. So I decided to, uh, to investigate that. And turns out there was uh, some kind of uh, incompatibility between uh, between uh, HTTPS two and HTTPS one. So my first day was an, uh, getting an actual core comment. It was uh, a test core comment. It was over a year ago. Um, but yeah, th these are just like boring details of how I got started. Um, but yeah, the th the fact is I have an ongoing affection with Node Core since then, and I'm I'm really into core development. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get to the actual point of the talk. So how big is, is the Node, Node Core? Um, yeah, Node Core is 32,000 uh, 32, lines of code. This includes uh, 13,000 lines of JavaScript and 18,000 lines of C++ code. As uh, these are kind of boring details, but this shows you how, how big the project is and how, how difficult is it to maintain it and uh, what the code actually does, kind of. So, um, sorry? No, uh, this, uh, this doesn't include LibEV, and it doesn't include tests, and it doesn't include uh, other dependencies like OpenS, uh, OpenSSL and uh, CRS, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, this doesn't add up because there's, uh, there are a few files with uh, D language uh, for dtrace, and uh, there is also some Python for installation. Okay, so basically there are three uh, rules uh, which core team uh, tries to uh, tries to follow, uh, which are keep it minimal. I'm going to describe it later because uh, whenever I talk to somebody uh, like from Ruby community or something like that, they're like, "Yeah, so what kind of standard library does this uh, Node thing have?" I'm like, well, you know, just like simple bindings. And they're kind of kind of wondering because like. Uh, there, are, there aren't really sweet APIs or something like that for manipulating arrays or whatever. So this, this kind of surprises people that I'm going to, to talk about a bit more. Uh, second thing, keep it fast. Uh, if you look into Node.js core uh, code, JavaScript code, you will be kind of scared because uh, there are so many optimizations. There are so many uh, like hot paths. Imagine uh, if we would write just uh, silly code for, for writing the file. It, w it would be really slow. So uh, core team tries to optimize uh, it as, as much as possible, which is really good. Uh, and this uh, third, thing, third uh, thing is keep it compatible. So how many Windows users are here? OK, sorry to hear that. But yeah, um, core team tries to, uh, tries to keep uh, Node.js compatible with uh, Windows. Which is kind of understandable because the more users you have, the more pro publicity you get, the more uh, contributors contributors you get. I know this is how Bert started. He he was working for uh, for a company and they were using Windows, right? Yeah, and and he wanted to to use Windows. So yeah, this is a cool story. Uh, but yeah, um, they tried to keep it compatible with Windows, Linux, uh, OS X, uh, FreeBSD. 
some, uh, and obviously SmartOS. Um, okay, so why why do why the how do they keep it minimal? I mean, don't you guys want like a sweet standard library? So um, basically, this isn't how it should work. I think that the core of uh, of Node.js should be as minimal as possible to stimulate user space. Uh, so every one of us, every one of us can can write some library. Would we actually do that if there were so many libraries in Node Core? I don't think so. I think we would be just trying to to use whatever Node Core gives us. But it, uh, so a thing which might have seemed like a bad idea ended up stimulating community uh, and supporting uh, creating uh, more libraries. So um, yesterday I checked how many libraries are in, in npm JS registry. Uh, it was uh, 15,000 packages. And it's like really outstanding number uh, looking at how young the community is. I mean, I'm not sure how many Ruby gems are there or how many packages uh, in Python registry are there, but these communities are kind of old and really older than the uh, Node.js community. So this is kind of outstanding number. So this is why, uh, why they want to keep uh, the core minimal. Um, next thing is the standard, li the standard library is where modules go to die. This is what Kenneth Rates said about Python, uh, but it turns out to be true in, uh, in kind of every language, because well, if you want to push uh, so many modules into the standard library into into the core, you end up not having people to maintain them. You end up just uh, just like freezing versions and this kind of stuff. This isn't a really good uh, good thing to do. I mean, when when you want your language to become stale, you, sh you should probably do that. Okay, so um, actual uh, actual note. How how does it look like internally? Okay, there are um, five essential parts of uh, of Java, of uh, Node Core, five essential uh, four essential libraries. Um, we have JavaScript code, like lots of code. Uh, I think it was thirteen thousand lines of code. Then we have V8. I will describe each of those later. Uh, then we have libuv and HTTP parse and, and CRS. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. It's uh, JavaScript. There are, um, I think, 20 or some uh, something like that files, mainly located in Node lib and Node SRC, uh, Node.js. This is what actually powers uh, Node.js. This is where uh, where most of things should happen uh, because of uh, of how V8 works. I will describe it too later. Okay, so V8. What what the hell is V8? I think ev does everyone know what V8 actually is here? Raise your hands if you, if you do. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I guess we're all JavaScript developers and, and things. Uh, so it's a, a really short explanation. Uh, JavaScript virtual uh, machine featuring uh, JIT compiler, which means that it compiles JavaScript code uh, to assembly language uh, as, as it uh, needs code compiled. So it's kind of lazy compilation, this kind of thing. Um, it ends up being really, really fast. Except one case when you uh, go from JavaScript to C++ code heavily. So um, this is this is the thing why why we should move as many, uh, as much code as possible to to JavaScript because calls from JavaScript to C++ are uh, are kind of expensive and everything uh, to oper to cooperate with operating system we have to uh, call to C++. Okay, so initially it was used with uh, Google Chrome web browser. Uh, yeah, this is how awesome it is. Okay, so libuv. Um, back in the days when Node wasn't really popular, but it, uh, and uh, it was just led by by Ryan Dahl. Uh, Ryan Dahl, um, well, everything was one library. A uh, uh, essential uh, library uh, was in Node. But then it turned out that actually to keep compatibility, uh, to keep uh, things working with uh, with Windows, with Linux, with OS X, with various BSDs, you uh, you have to kind of separate things, and they didn't really belong to Node.js core. It would end up being a, a terrible mess. So uh, one day, uh, it was like I think one year ago, over one year ago, uh, they started the concept of VLIBV, which Bert, where is Bert? Oh, he escaped. Okay, cool. So we, Barrett is going to talk about libuv uh, even more, but essentially it's the platform layer of Node.js. So every every operation which requires uh, operating system, so like every read from file, every uh, every write to a file, every uh, server uh, goes through libuv. 
this is this is where magic happens. Yeah, and again. Um, okay, so HTTP, HTTP parser uh, is what powers HTTP uh, module in, in Node.js core. Uh, so basically, when um, it's uh, HTTP parser able to parse both HTTP requests and responses. It was designed for, for high performance applications uh, by Ryan Dahl. It's based on uh, Nginx uh, HTTP parser. Do you guys, have you guys heard about Nginx? Yeah, great. Okay, so it's it's a very fast uh, static uh, file server uh, which supports modules and, and this kind of stuff. Who needs engines when you have Node anyway? Uh, so yeah, it's it's really fast. It uh, so a fun thing is it it requires no memory allocation. It just for uh, so it needs 40 bytes of memory to to operate. So it can be used on pretty much every uh, every module uh, every architecture uh, I've ever seen. Yeah, again, picking rainbows. Okay, so CRS. Um, so uh, when you want to talk to a, some servers, so like for example, Google.com, you have to resolve the name uh, from Google.com to an actual IP, and this is what uh, CRS does. Uh, but it does it. Uh, it doesn't depend on uh, operating system uh, mechanism for uh, for. Resolving uh, DNS, it just resolves the DNS itself, uh, but it does it asynchronously, so it's, uh, it's the proper node way. Um, recently, it was removed from from LibUV where it was before, uh, and it got uh, got into the node core uh, itself. It was in recent, I think it was like a month ago or something. Um, okay, so well, I forgot the picking slide, so here it is for CRS. Okay, so how do things uh, in Node Core work together? Because I introduced like many parts, I introduced uh, as, uh, essential libraries, but I never uh, told you how things work together. So um, basically, uh, let's say that you have a simple fs dot read call, which is uh, which just talks to a file system and re reads uh, data from a file. So uh, when the thing uh, the thing starts at the JavaScript level, uh, so V8 uh, sees the FS read call. Then uh, you go down to the V8 level, and then you go down to libuv level, which um, essentially executes uh, the operation, which uh, which reads from from a file in the thread, but it's it's an implementation detail. Um, and then it gets back to uh, to V8, and it, then it gets back to Node. So this is why uh, C calls are. This is why we want to move as many things as possible to Node Core, uh, to JavaScript code, because calls to uh, to C uh, library, to C runtime, are pretty uh, pretty damn expensive, and in V8. Um, okay, uh, I forgot that if this is it. Oh, okay, this, this slide got misplaced. But yeah, it's cool. Okay. Um, so I think I think this is it um, from from the uh, Node.js internals talk. So uh, I forgot the thanks slide. If you guys have any questions, just uh, hit me up on the board party when I will be getting shitfaced uh, today. So yeah, thank you guys.